Hi guys, welcome to this week's tutorial. This week is going to be part one of four of the eye tutorial. Um, the first one is of the horse and this is the drawing over here. I'm very proud of how this turned out. It looks very, very good, I think. And the reference photo is this one along with all its colors on the side. So I'll provide you with the photo and with the colors that I've listed over here and then talk you through the whole process. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to separate this um, tutorial into four parts and the first part is going to be on how to draw this horse's eye. So the reason I chose this photo is because it has a lot of color and I really like the reflection within the eye. Um, a lot of the horse photographs I looked at, the reflection in the eye, you can see um, the reflection is someone taking a photograph up close of the horse's eye. Whereas this reflection is of a paddock and it looks like the farmer is next to the paddock and you can even see a bit of trees and sky um, within the eye as well as well as the ground. And there's a lot of detail around the eye, um, a lot of um, eyelashes and a lot of color. So I think this is going to be a very, very good um, horse eye to draw as a tutorial. I can also show you exactly how to go about getting the wet look of the eye to make it look round and moist and also how to get these fine little hairs to look really small and detailed like that using my etching tool. So this is going to be the first part of four parts of a tutorial. Um, the other eyes are a, a dog's eyes and that photograph is of a photo I took of one of my Ridgeback girls. And then I'm going to do a cat eye which I got from morgfile.com and a macaw parrot um, eye which I just found one randomly on the internet and pretty much took a small screenshot of the eye to focus on that one. So um, this one is on the internet um, on its own website where it talks about eye conditions of a horse. So um, this I couldn't find the photographer of this piece but I don't plan on selling prints or anything of it. I just want to show you guys how I draw it. So let's get started. So the materials I'm going to be using is my Archer's watercolor paper and I'm going to use my Prisma Color Premier pencils and my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and I am going to use my Art Spectrum solvent. I'm going to use a sharp etching tool like this and I am going to use a, a number of little brushes to blend with the solvent. I'm not going to worry about using my swatches for color matching. I am just going to guess the colors as I go and we will see how it all turns out. Okay, so the first part is just the etching. So um, I am scratching out all those textured areas in the right direction on the eyelid. And I'm also going to do that for the eyelashes and the waterline within the eye and also the... Um, the tiny little hairs at the bottom of the eye. So I didn't show you in the um, video how I did all those areas because you can't actually see what I'm doing. So just kind of figure out um, where you want all the real highlights and textured bits to be and that's where you will etch. Now I'm going in with a very sharp um, Prismacolor black pencil and I am going to fill in the blackest areas of the eyes. And I just fill that in lightly at first and then if I know that an area is going to be very black I will come in later and layer a bit more to make it a bit darker. So I'm not using very very smooth lines. This is um, a horse's eye and it is textured. There's a lot of textures in there. So I'm not going to go and have very very smooth pencil strokes. I'm going to go in different directions and I'm going to make it look um, as textured as possible, obviously taking note of the reference photo before I do so. 
So under the eyelid there is a dark shadow and you can see as I'm colouring in with the black you can see we have etched the eyelashes in. So I'm just going to continue on that way. And the nice thing is when you do the eyelashes like this you can create that dark shadow under the eyelashes without trying to worry about going between the eyelashes. What are you eating? These puppies, they're always eating something. Okay? What are you eating, Bobby? Okay, and then I continue on with the um, Indigo Blue uh, Polychromos pencil because it's not completely black. There's a lot of blues and purples in this picture. So I'm just going to make sure to um, keep layering with the blue as well as the black. And also I'll layer with the blues on top of the black as well. Um, and that's the whole reason we layer lightly so that we can keep layering colors on top of one another. I am now going in with um, PC1078 which is like a really dark purple color and also again with the indigo blue and I'm going to start layering with the purples and the blues. If you have a look at the reference photo there are a lot of these colors in there and you want to make sure that you put them in there. Even though you know that if you, the more purple that you're going to add to a picture the more it's going to look sort of sick by the time you put the solvent in because it's going to end up having this bright purple pinkish kind of blue color and it's just not going to look right that's okay it's the first layers you don't worry about that until um worry about the look of it until much later so try and get past the fact that your drawing is going to look really bad in the beginning before it starts looking really good Okay, now I want to come in with a bit more of a brighter blue. So I am using the Polychromos Prussian Blue 246. And the SC um, that I'm putting in front of this number just is the to say that it's my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. And then PC is obviously the Prismacolor pencil. So I'm going to use this blue to go in on the lighter areas over here and around to emphasize these blues over here and a bit over here. And then I'm going to come in with a bit more of a brighter purplish color, a pinkish purplish color. And then um, we'll come in with some browns. And then this the um, paddock will come in with whites and grays and then we'll probably be ready to blend with the solvent for the first first few layers okay so i am using that blue fc246 and i am trying to emphasize the blues around the eye um, as much as I can. So looking at the reference photo you can see that those areas are a lot bluer than the other areas and now I'm going to come in with my FC193 pencil and add a bit of those pinkish colors. And then um, the black I use again for the shadowed areas and it is going to get to a point now where I probably won't men mention all the colors I'm using but I will have a final list for you guys at the end because I'm just going to be jumping around so many colors that it does make it a little bit tricky to um, mention all of them. But this one is FC193, which is my polychromos, um, Faber-Castell polychromos pencil. Because now that I've added the pinks, I want to add some of the more browner colors. So this is um, the polychromos 187 pencil. And this is the Prismacolor 1019 pencil. So I am just going to give you the list of all the colors that I used in the end because it is going to be hard because of all the swaps in this time lapse. So using my white um, luminance pencil, so you can use your Prismacolor white um, as well if you have one, or the Caran d'Ache luminance white. I put in the white areas of the fence first because by pressing down with the wax white base pencil first it makes it more difficult for other colors to go over the top real easy and that will at least keep it light and keep the areas nicely shaded so now i'm going in between the paddock areas which are going to be a representation that there is something else behind it and it's going to give that 
image more of a three-dimensional look and you're going to see that there's a lot of perspective. So now we're getting towards the fun part where we're going to start getting ready to put our first layer of solvent over the image. Um, but I'm just coming in and using a grey pencil to kind of fill in some of the rest of the areas. Now usually before I put a solvent down I do want to get um, a good bottom layer done before I put the solvent down um, so that there's a lot of colors to put together instead of wasting solvent um, or wasting blending a layer if there aren't that many colors down. So um, try and layer as much as you can first before you get to the point of putting the solvent down. So I thought that in this section I needed to emphasize some of the purple areas within the eyelid and the more shadowed areas just to make it even darker and predominant because the layers were so, um, the values weren't as emphasized just before this step. When I go in and blend with the solvent, you want those values to show up really easily and um, that's why I decided to go in and make some areas a little bit darker before I stepped in with the solvent and that's going to help me later on because it'll be easy to see the different values straight away and then I can just work on smaller areas at a time. So that's the look of it. Before the solvent's done, it looks very much like a crayon. It just looks soft and crayon and textured and it's that's okay. That's normal. Before the solvent comes in, that's that's a normal look for your drawing to have. You don't have to put pressure or anything down. And now that we're putting the solvent down, you're gonna see that the color is gonna pop right out. Now I have so little solvent on my brush, and I don't know if that's what some some of you are struggling with because I've had two of my patrons say that they just cannot get get it right with the solvent and I'm thinking that maybe you have too much on your brushes because I have so little solvent on my brush that I feel like I have to force my brush down quite firmly for the solvent to even come off. What if, when you tap it on your hand it should still pretty much feel dry. You shouldn't it shouldn't feel wet at all. It should be close to being dry. That's how little solvent you have on your brush. And you're going to... I keep dunking my brush in the solvent and drying it off many, many times within this first layer. So it's not it's not like I'm just using it once. I'm, I keep putting it in the solvent. And there's minimal solvent on the brush. So um, try that next time if you think you're having troubles with your solvent because they really mustn't be much on your brush at all and then you're just gonna gonna blend it in um you would have seen that i used a sort of a dabbing motion with the brush where i just push down on the page like this and that is me using um because the top of the eyelid is quite textured i'm not worried about going side to side with the solvent and also um i use the etching tool there so i don't really want too much of the solvent to go into those indents that i created using the etching tool so i just dab straight from the top and because it's pretty much mostly dry um, it's not going to affect it too much and that texture is going to remain and it's going to stay sort of highlighted so now I am going to emphasize more on the details of my work now that we have the first layer down um, we've got all the right colors in place so now it's you can start focusing on certain areas of the eye and working on the details. So I'm using my Polychromos Indigo Blue and I'm going to emphasize on the shadows a little bit more and you'll see that a lot of them I use like maybe circular motions or I use dotted motions or something and that's gonna that's just me focusing on what the texture is on the actual reference photo and working in the right directions of all of that. And then over there I just used a um, Polychromos, uh, I mean a Prismacolor pencil, I think it was PC140 I used and because there are some lighter highlights on the eyelid, I used my wax base pencils, my Prismacolor wax base pencils to use, put, to put those lighter highlights on top of the darker areas because when you make create such soft layers you can put lighter colors over the darker colors with your wax base pencil. You can't do that with your oil based pencils, unfortunately it doesn't come up. But your wax based pencils are lighter colors will still come up on top of your darker colors so that's what i did on top of the eyelid now i'm coming in with my blue and i'm just gonna make sure that i'm creating those shadowed and those dark areas um, 
um, more, just working on them more, uh, using the purple to create sort of circular textured motions there next to the eye, and then using the light Prismacolor pencil, um, I think it's beige, and emphasizing on those little details. There is the very light gray Prismacolor pencil, and that's also going to do the same thing where you're going to use the lighter colors to sort of highlight over the, the darker colors. Um, now I'm coming in with the yeah, the, ro the rosy sort of Prismacolor pencil and I'm going to create some of the highlighted eyelashes. Not many of these eyelashes are actually white, so I'm going to try and cover all those eyelashes so that none of them are white and that is only the real light blues or purples or pinks that I use to create the highlights areas on top of the eyelashes. Um, because yes, it's, there isn't much white. So using a blue inside the eye, now I'm, I'm going to focus a lot on the inside of the eye and take note of my reference photo because um, it's just a bunch of little shapes. There's nothing very difficult about doing the inside of the eye. You kind of have to forget that you're drawing an eye and just focus on the shapes that you're working with and everything ends up working out pretty good because you're not focusing on getting you're not focusing on the fact that there seems to be a human in the reflection of that eye so you want to get it to look like a human because if you actually focus on the shape and the values of that um, that part that you assume is a human within the eye um, it doesn't look anything like it it just looks a couple like a couple of blurry sort of spots in an area um, which is just giving us the illusion that that is what it is and all you have to do is focus on the fact that it's just shapes that's all it is it's just shapes and with the eye the horse the whole time I was drawing this eye I wasn't focused on the fact that I was drawing an eye I just kept looking at the shapes and the textures and and focusing on that and it all works out in the end if you just focus on the real small parts of things everything just works together in the end because you're not having your brain try and um, confuse you by telling you that that's not how an eye is supposed to look because when you're developing an artwork in the beginning it's going to look so bad because you you've got no details in there yet you don't have all the right colors in there yet um you probably can't tell what it is yet and that's when your brain tries to confuse you and like oh no you're screwing this up it doesn't look right but you kind of have to ignore yourself and focus on the shapes don't focus on the fact that you're drawing an eye Pretend like you don't even know what you're drawing. You're just drawing something abstract and all you're looking at is the shapes. And in the end, it just all works out nicely. So I just went to blend very gently with the Sylvan again. Again, I hardly had anything on my brush. And now that that's smoothed out a little bit more, I can use my lighter pencils and emphasize the highlights even further. So yeah, I've got a very light cool Prismacolor Grey and I'm sort of working little scribbles over here and that's going to create those textures next to the eye, the highlighted textures right there. And it's going to make it look very three-dimensional and sort of coarse looking. And then I'm going to also do that on top of the eyelid and create some of those highlighted eyelashes over there because like I said, none of the eyelashes are actually white. So also going and creating more of a texture under the eyelid because there's a few highlighted pieces over there. There is some blue in the waterline and I just added that over there. I'm using my black to make the darks um, even darker within the eye over there and that's going to give it a more three-dimensional look, bringing the lighter colors to the front and the darker colors to the back. And now I'm using very bright pink to emphasize those pinks. Um, it's nice, this whole image has a lot of blues, purples and pinks and they all work very well together. So layer them gently and just keep building them up and it all works out. And even though that pink might have seemed like it was really, really bright, in the end it's, it's not going to look that bright. Um, so don't be afraid to use your brighter colours. Um, it will still look bright but it will still, it's, it's still the right colour to pick. can hear the birdies chip. It sounds so nice. We've got such nice weather today. It's overcast and it's been drizzling and it's just been so nice to be able to get cozy inside the house. Like we've 
had a super super hot summer so having a little bit of a cool day is heaven <laughs> okay so adding more purples into the eyelashes and into the background there's a lot of um, sort of reddish colors in there but I need to remember that the reds are more towards the pink side than they are towards the brown side so just keep that in mind as well um, I always if I need to make an area lighter like the sky was quite blue but I needed it to be just a bit lighter then I would use my wax based white pencil and go over it just to make those areas even lighter so you can see the the before I put color to the paddock I did have I put the white luminance pencil down first and now the paddock is starting to create or develop a sort of shape and you can see what it is that's in there. Hello. What have you been doing? Hmm? Hmm? No, that's mine. Thank you. So, my big poofy dogs always have to be Nosy. Oh, excuse me. Now I am emphasizing more of the blues. So constant building up of layers and colors. So um, I didn't actually use that many colors in this. I think I'm not going to count it. Actually, I used a lot of colors. I mean, it's just an eye that I drew, but there were, are a lot of colors in there. But keep building them up. Keep taking note of your reference. Now one thing I did notice, like even though I tried to keep to as many of the same colors as I possibly could, what the reference photo that I printed, okay, I'm using a white jelly roll pen now as a final to create those really, really white highlights. And that's going to make the waterline look very watery. And that's also what I used to sign my name on the bottom right corner. And then that is pretty much the end result. So this tutorial uh, or this part of the tutorial of the horse's eye will be available to my YouTube subscribers as well as my patrons. Um, but only this part of the tutorial will be available to my YouTube subscribers. Um, the other three eyes, the cat, the dog and the macaw, they will um, be strictly for my supporters on Patreon. Um, but the reason I'm putting this horse eye tutorial on my YouTube channel is because one of the first tutorials that I did was of how to draw a horse's eye. And I think that this is a much better updated version. And obviously it's a little less embarrassing to watch compared to my first video. Um, but I noticed that a lot of people are still viewing that video. So I want to be able to give my YouTube subscribers the updated version of how to draw a horse's eye as well. Um, so that is available for YouTube and for Patreon. But patrons, the next video coming up will be on how to draw a cat eye. And that will be part two. And then part three will be the macaw. And part four will be... The eye of one of my Ridgeback girls, Honey. And I am going to try and do all of this as soon as I possibly can. I do hope that you bear with me. We are in the process of selling our house and looking for another house on the East Coast. And I'm trying to finish an airbrush course as quick as I possibly can. So a lot of time has been going into airbrushing. So I know I've been delayed in my tutorials, but I will not... I might be delayed, but I'm not going to not do them. So they will all be coming up. So thank you for your patience and um, everything will still happen. Maybe not on the specific date that I try to schedule it in for, but it will be happening. So I thank you guys so much for watching and for um, all your patience and I will see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.